Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We are at Iron Root Republic Distilling in Denison, Texas. And who was here at the same time? I don't know. Who? Uh, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy Fraley is Nancy? joining us. Nancy? Oh, my gosh. Yes. It just so happened the weekend that we were here, Nancy is here leading a, uh, a kind of a master distilling course. Blending course? Yeah. What do you call What's the official title? Um, It's it, it's called uh, Blending Warehousing and Maturation. Wow. Uh so. Great time for us to meet. I know we had done originally, we had reviewed Joseph Magnus and the Joseph Magnus mm -hmm. Cigar Blend on YouTube. Um, and you had reached out and said, hey, I watched your video on Nancy Fraley and I'm responsible. <laughs> well, and we, and we were, sure did. We <laughs> wanted to have you come on a live show and you wanted to come on, but you're so yeah, busy. Yeah. I mean, literally <laughs> world traveling. To, a, to blame, I, I don't know what you <laughs> Well, hey, oh, that's, that's true. I'm hard to get hold of. While we sit here and yeah. talk for a little yeah. bit, though, I want to pour. I know you are responsible. These bottles mm -hmm. uh, that are here in front of us, you have worked on since we're at Iron Root. We've got to grab the Iron grab. Root. Can we sample? We should ask permission yes. since she signed this bottle. Are we okay to sample yep. directly out of this? Yep. Okay. All right. Robert and Jonathan that's Licorice are sitting. That's a PD version for you. So. Ooh. Speaking my language now, and I know right. you just have a few minutes because you're in between classes. Yes. I right? am, and That's, so you let yeah, us know I'm they're doing. Like, they're literally doing a practical right now. They're doing an exercise. They right? are. I've, I've got the students out there doing a uh, an exercise right now. So now, on that so, note, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit while we're nosing and sampling here. So, so they're out doing an exercise. Um, walk the viewers through a little bit of like, and I know you have several different courses, but. Kind of what does this course entail that you're working on? Now? So the uh, the the course I'm working on right now or uh, teaching this weekend is a three day uh, course intended for um, for people to work as cellar masters or um, you know they're they're blenders or they're di uh, distillers who also do all the maturation of blending. Um, so it it's essentially from when am I the uh, French tradition I kind of come from that we, we call it élevage. So, so you can think about the uh, uh, life of a of a of a new spirit. You know, it um, it, um, it it's conceived through the union of um, of a, a yeast and some kind of fermentable substrate ferments that spends time in a copper womb, right? And then then it's born out. So, uh, the elevage is all the you know you, you now have this newborn spirit, right? And if if it's going to be a brown spirit. Um, your your job is to, to actually raise it to maturity to you know become a mature adult. So I, I'll go through a you know the terrible twos, you know, <laughs> be a feisty adolescent, and the the goal is to to make that the barrel and the spirit inside into a mature adult. You know, some something people are going to enjoy. Drinking. So you have to let it go and so, hope that you raised it right. Right. So yeah. so so everything I teach in that class is 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 essentially after. Um, uh, you know what happens after uh, distillation? All the uh, uh, you know cellar work, you know warehousing work. You know how, how to keep your stock healthy. Um, you know uh, uh, you know having the right maturation conditions in your warehouse, um, and all of that, all the way through. Uh, you know if if I'm uh, um, making a bourbon blend, you know at how you know. To build um, a blend and how to keep consistency over time, how to keep the quality up, and how to create complexity. I know I last think, night so. you, there were six different um, uh, drams set out. You actually walked everybody through a proper nosing, the tasting, kind of letting them know a little bit of, of what they were. And a lot of these folks are experienced themselves, but the way you kind of walked them through the nuances was really neat, even for us to be present for it. So yeah. yeah, that's that's something I, I I think even people in the industry always have, and there there's always something to to learn, and uh, you know how to do it a little better, and <laughs> and make ever better whiskey too. Yeah. So <laughs> beautiful, yeah. It was so nice that we were able to coincide uh, coming down to Iron Root while you were here. Oh. All right, now so, tell us a little bit about this. Yes. Yeah. So um, so this is um, um, Iron Root Republic's Icarus. And 
This had its genesis uh, a few years ago when uh, the uh, Licorice family, um, uh, brothers uh, Jonathan and Robert and uh, their mother Marcia, they were at my house. And it was late, uh, late one night on a uh, <laughs> Berkeley, California, November evening, if, if I recall. And um, I think they said there was a lot of Armagnac that had been a, a lot, consumed. A lot of vintage Armagnac had Ooh. been consumed that night. Would, it, would even have some 19th century wow. uh, Armagnac. So we were pretty... Uh, I should say quite inspired but <laughs> well, we at that moment traveling. and um, and we thought you know how can we create something really interesting and before you know it out come the graduated cylinders and the pipettes and we're sitting there after midnight creating prototypes and uh, and uh, nothing yeah. says party like graduated cylinders and you pipettes. got it hey that's <laughs> uh, you know we're, we're a wild crew I like love it. <laughs> I love it. And then the cops were called. That's right. Yeah. I think it's not really loud. So the, the Icarus, though, is born 100% um, corn whiskey, wanted to bring in some scotch characteristics. Mm -hmm. So there's some port casking, actually a lot of port casking going on with this, and then a peated from a peated a barrel that used to have peated scotch in it as well. That's uh, absolutely right. It, it, and, and as a matter of fact, um, uh, the, the port casts came in because you know and anytime you're working with peat um, you, you really you know, it's going to be very drying right mm -hmm. um, which which is nice but but to, to help balance that dryness you've got to have just a little bit of sweet backbone in there not not too much at, uh, for, for for this we didn't really want the port to be that prominent just to, to be there as a you know, to, to give it some backbone so so it's not completely dry. And that way, you know, you, know, you get those luscious, uh, I just, I, I love the peat notes mm. in it. Uh, you mm. get the the corn notes, you know, the, the creaminess of it. Um, and then, then just that, um, it, and it, it, to me, it's not that perceptible, but just that little bit of port in there that, that just kind of holds the, the whole structure together, mm -hmm. makes it not too drying. Mm -hmm. Now we pulled some from the cask back there from a new batch is coming yes, out. I know. And, and the, I know. Yeah. Oh, the port. I would really the port. Be, yeah. <laughs> the port really jumped out of it. I'm looking on that one though. So and it is on this one as well. Um, I like it. Yeah. And I was and I, and I said out in the warehouse, I was like, if I had this blind, I'd I might be struggling to figure out what it is. Yeah. Well, you yeah. Know, because of the, so, the corn gives whiskey, you a lot the of surprises the corn, along the way. smoke. It, yeah. it it is, and you know, you know what what it, what I think is is so interesting about it is it's not um, although it is a, a whiskey on the younger side, with with all that that it's it's got going on, it it's a whiskey that really you know, you just have to stop and think and mm -hmm. you know, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? When mm -hmm. what's this all about? Yeah, right. Very yeah. unique. Yeah. And it, I, I actually, that's one thing I like in whiskeys in general is when I sample something and I can't, I can't immediately put it in a box. You know, I can't say, oh, this is this or this is, I get that. And so when I'm getting subtleties and things that are different, I have mm -hmm. to puzzle it out a little bit. There's a lot of enjoyment in there for me. Yeah. Well, Nancy, thank you for joining us. We know you got to run back. They're probably done with, I was gonna with their hands-on work. Oh my God, I, I hear I run yet again. Hey, gentlemen, uh, it has been an absolute pleasure, and I I hope to you know we we have another occasion to you bet. drink together again and oh, absolutely and, pull out and, the pipettes and the graduated cylinders. You got it. I have, have a wild now, I do party think you guys may be enjoying a cigar later tonight. We have some. We that cigars. yeah been, yeah. Ooh -wee. Been known to enjoy a cigar or two. And <laughs> look forward to it. All right, we've got to let you run. There's yep. a bunch of folks out there like, Where, where's All the right. expert? That's oh, she ran away. She's, she's so hiding. Cheers. So. She's in the boardroom. <laughs> cheers, cheers, you guys. Close it out, Bart. Yeah. All right, Scotch no, gotcha. you Scotch gods. Slonging. <laughs> Dummies. Dummies. Mm -hmm.